Hi dears, welcome back. Today we will learn history from class 8. And the chapter which we study is the making of the national movement, 1870s to 1947. The national movement of India marks a significant event in the history of India. This moment played a major role in the independence of the country. There were several reasons that contributed in the making of the national movement in India. Here let's discuss some of them. The Emergence of Nationalism What are the reasons behind Indian national movement? The British ruled over India in their self-interest. Gradually Indians realized their motives. Their attempt to interfere in religion and social practices resulted in the armed revolt of 1857. You already learnt about the revolt of 1857. The British crushed the revolt but after the revolt, people of India became determined to root out British rule from the country. As awareness spread among them, they began to feel that India was for the people of India and its resources were meant for all the Indians. The political associations were started forming after 1850. The important associations were the Pune Sarvajanik Sabha, the Indian Association, the Madras Mahajan Sabha, the Bombay Presidency Association, and the Indian National Congress. These associations worked in a specific part of the country. However, their goal was stated as the goal of the entire country. Their aim was that Indians should be empowered to take decisions regarding their affairs. The discontent against the Britishers grew stronger during the 1870s and 1880s. The British posted various laws which agitated the people of India. They are the Arms Act 1878, the Vernacular Press Act 1878, and the Ilbert Bill in 1883. Arms Act the Arms Act passed in 1878. It prohibited Indians from carrying weapons. However, the Europeans and the Anglo-Indians were allowed to keep arms without license. This caused resentment amongst the Indians. In the same year, the Vernacular Press Act was also enacted. It empowered the government to confiscate the newspapers if they print anything against the British government. The Ilbert Bill was passed in 1883 by Lord Ripon. It was introduced to remove racial discrimination in the judicial services. According to the provisions of the bill, an Indian judge at a sessions court could try a charge against a European. Previously, only European judges could try cases against Europeans. However, due to protests by the Europeans, the bill was withdrawn. The Indians feel the need for organizing themselves. The Indian National Congress, 72 delegates from all over the country met at Bombay in 1885. Thus, formed an association known as the Indian National Congress. The founder leaders of Indian National Congress were Dada Bhai Noroji, Feroz Shah Mehta, Badruddin Tyabji, W.C. Banerjee, R.C. Dutt, and S. Subramanya Iyer. A retired British official, A. O. Hume, was one of the founding members of the Indian National Congress. He worked significantly in reuniting Indians together. A nation in the making, Congress demanded a greater voice for Indians in the government and in administration. It also demanded the separation of judiciary from the executive, the repeal of Arms Act, and freedom of speech and expression. Congress raised several economic issues also. An increase in the land revenue had impoverished peasants and zamindars. So the Congress demanded reduction of revenue, cut in military expenditure, and more funds for irrigation. Resolutions were also passed in the annual meeting of INC regarding the salt tax, handling of Indian laborers abroad, and the poor condition of the forest dwellers. The method of political bargaining of the INC was criticized by some leaders after the year 1890. In 1907, the Congress split into two different groups, moderates and extremists. Moderates wanted to go against the British peacefully, 
but demands of extremists were aggressive. But the aim of both was to suppress the British Empire from India. After the split, the Congress came to be dominated by the moderates. Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangadhar Tilak, Bipin Chandra Pal, the first three called Lal Bal Pal led the extremists. They argued that people must rely on their own strength, people must fight for Swaraj. Tilak raised the slogan, Swaraj is my birthright, and I shall have it. The partition of the Bengal, Bengal was the largest province of British India. It included Bihar and parts of Orissa. Lord Curzon was the Viceroy of India from 1899 to 1905. In 1905, he announced the partition of Bengal. It resulted in huge protests across India. The idea was to divide Bengal into two, Bengal and Eastern Bengal. The British argued for dividing Bengal for reasons of administrative convenience. Another important reason for the partition was to bring an end to the political influence of the educated middle class among the Bengal people. Both the moderates and the radicals oppressed the partition of Bengal. This led to the birth of the Swadeshi movement, which boycotted British institutions and goods. Large public meetings and demonstrations were organized. The Swadeshi movement opposed British rule encouraged national education and use of Indian languages. A group of Muslim landlords and Nawabs formed the All India Muslim League at Dhaka in 1906. A mass meeting of Muslims held at Dhaka supported the partition of Bengal and demanded for separate electorates for Muslims. Moderates and extremists reunited in December 1915. In the year 1916, the Congress and the Muslim League signed the Lucknow Pact and decided to work together for representative government in the country. The growth of mass nationalism, the First World War changed the economic and political situation in India. The government increased taxes on individuals and businesses. The price of all commodities increased putting the common man into a lot of hardship. The war created a demand for industrial goods such as jute bags, cloth, and rails. It caused a decline of imports from other countries into India. In 1917 there was a revolution in Russia. News about peasants and workers' struggles and ideas of socialism circulated widely. The Russian revolution made a big impact on the minds of Indian nationalists. The growth of mass nationalism began to take place after 1919. Peasants, tribal, students, and women became involved in the struggle against British rule. The advent of Mahatma Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi arrived in India in 1915 from South Africa. Mahatma Gandhi spent his first year in India traveling throughout the country to understand the people, their needs, and the overall situation. Afterward, he led to local movements in Champaran, Keda, and Ahmedabad, in which he got immense success. In Ahmedabad, he led a successful millworkers' strike in 1918. The Rollat Act Rollat Act 1919 is regarded as one of the most controversial legislative bills passed by the British government. The Act was passed by the Imperial Legislative Council on 18 March 1919. The Act limited fundamental rights such as the freedom of expression and strengthened police powers. This law gave them the power to arrest any person without any trial. Gandhiji called for Satyagraha against the Rollat Act. On 6 April 1919, Mahatma Gandhi started a non-violent Satyagraha against the unjust Rollat Act. There were a number of demonstrations and hatals in the country and the government used brutal measures to suppress them. The Jaliawala Bagh massacre in Amritsar on Baisakhi Day was a part of this suppression. During the Rolat Satyagraha, the participants ensured that Hindus and Muslims were united against British rule. The Khilafat movement and the non-cooperation movement were organized to oppose British rule in India.
Let us study in detail. During First World War, Turkey joined the war in favor of Germany. But Turkey and Germany lost the war. The territories of Turkey were to be divided among France, Greece and Britain. The Sultan of Turkey was considered as the Khalifa, the religious head of the Muslims. In 1920 the British imposed a harsh treaty on the Turkish Sultan. This enraged the Muslims and Khilafat agitation started under the leadership of Muhammad Ali and Shaukat Ali. They formed the All India Khilafat Committee. They wished to initiate a full-fledged non-cooperation movement. It is called the non-cooperation movement because of the methods adopted in this movement. Gandhiji supported their movement to build unity among the Hindus and the Muslims. The non-cooperation movement was led by Mahatma Gandhi. During 1921 and 1922, the non-cooperation movement gained impetus. Thousands of students left government-controlled schools and colleges. Lawyers gave up their practices. Many Indians surrendered their British titles and legislatures were boycotted. People publicly burnt foreign cloth. People's initiatives, people from all walks of life joined in the movement for Swaraj or self-government. Some took the route of non-violence as advocated by Gandhiji. Why? Others protested in their own way. The Patidal peasants who belonged to Gujarat organized non-violent campaigns against the high land revenue demanded by the British. In Andhra Pradesh and Tamil Nadu, liquor shops were attacked. Gandhiji believed in building class unity. Many Indians regarded Gandhiji as a savior who would free India from the British and help them overcome their poverty. In February 1922, a crowd of peasants set fire to a police station in Chori Chora. Twenty-two policemen were killed on that day. It hurt Mahatma Gandhi because he had never thought that people would go violent. Mahatma Gandhi decided to withdraw the non-cooperation movement. He felt the movement was turning violent in many places. The Congress resolved to fight for Purna Swaraj in 1929 under the presidency of Jawaharlal Nehru. Consequently, it was declared that 26th January 1930 would be celebrated as the Independence Day all over the country. The march to Dandi, the British introduced a law stating that the government had control over the manufacture and sale of salt. It also imposed a tax on the sale of salt. Gandhi and other national leaders felt that it was wrong to impose tax on salt, which was an essential commodity for food. The leaders decided to oppose this tax. In 1930, Gandhiji declared that he would lead a march to break the salt law. On 12th March 1930, Gandhi started the Dandi march from Sabarmati Ashram towards the small coastal village of Dandi. Gandhiji broke the law by making salt, by collecting the natural salt lying on the seashore, and boiling it. Gandhiji got immense support from the people. The Government of India Act of 1935 prescribed provincial autonomy. And as per the provision of this act, the government announced elections to the provincial legislatures in 1937. In these elections, Congress was remarkably successful. Quit India and later, Mahatma Gandhi decided to initiate a new phase of movement against the British. Thus, Quit India movement was initiated in August 1942 under the leadership of Mahatma Gandhi. Gandhi gave the slogan to the people, Do or Die. As a result, Gandhiji and other leaders were jailed at once. But the movement spread. Finally, the British accepted the demand for freedom by the Indians. Towards independence and partition, the Muslim League gathered a huge support during the Quit India movement. After the 1937 provincial elections, Congress refused to form a joint government with the League in United Provinces. The League was annoyed with the Congress for rejecting their demand. 
The Muslim League passed a resolution in 1940 to demand independent states for the Muslims. Elections were held again in the provinces in 1946. Though the Congress was successful in all the general constituencies, the Muslim League performed well on the seats reserved for Muslims. At the end of the Second World War in 1945, the British opened talks with the Congress and the League for the Independence of India. But talks failed even with the mediation of the British. In March 1946, the British cabinet sent a three-member mission to Delhi to examine the League's demand for Pakistan and to suggest a suitable political framework for a free India. The mission suggested that India should remain united and constitute itself as a loose confederation with some autonomy for Muslim-majority areas. Neither the Congress nor the League agreed to it. Then, partition of India became inevitable. Though India became independent on 15 August 1947, it was partitioned into two countries, India and Pakistan. So, the joy of our country's independence from British rule was combined with the sorrow of partition of our country. Dears, from this chapter, we learned several reasons contributed to the making of the national movement in India, such as the emergence of nationalism, Rolat Satyagraha, growth of mass nationalism, quit India, and the situation that led to partition of India. I hope this video is beneficial for you to understand the concept of entire chapter quickly. To stay up to date with such videos, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Thank you.